y'all welcome back to my channel jordan mind body and soul where we learn to take care of ourselves mind body and soul in today's video as you already know from the title is a message to the early 20 somethings um black girl code so <laughs> this video i've been wanting to make forever but i couldn't figure out exactly the overall energy that i wanted to have during the video for me energy is very important and intentions is very important too so if i don't feel like i have pure or identified intentions before i do something i usually don't like to do it because i feel like your intentions can really really affect your your outcome so with that being said guys grab the vitality bowl and let's get started and like we know this channel is about my body and soul so today i just have my vitality bowl which is just this yummy ass plate of goodness and uh so if you if i'm eating away that's why i just want to be able to enjoy myself and then kind of talk to you like a big sister would is <laughs> a heart to heart now this is very important for me to get this message out to black girls especially because i feel like we're dealing with a lot of different dynamics and I'll go through those different dynamics as I discuss everything that I um, feel like should be covered today. But um, sometimes things hit us a little differently because of um, the way things are in society. The biggest thing that I want all of us beautiful black women, young black girls to have is confidence. Confidence in self. Confidence in how you look. Confidence in who you are confidence in the things that you do and in a society where we can be pushed down or judged for a bunch of other things that are outside of our element for an example we see a lot of times where people outside of our culture can do something and then it's trending it's fatty it's cool is fatty a word i don't know but if we do something, then it's that same thing can be looked down upon. Or, you know, certain fashion trends or certain styles, we create it. And I'm not saying we as people today, I'm saying just our culture itself has created and we're never given the recognition for it. So it, it can be frustrating. Um, so I feel like in those, because of that, we do a lot of things to try to assimilate or to try to make ourselves less of who we are to fit in to feel better. Um, there's less of us wearing our natural hair and it, it's okay to change it up and have different styles. But one thing that really hurt me once was when I had a friend, beautiful girl, like she's naturally just a gorgeous person. Um, she said that she felt like her natural hair did not fit her. She said, I feel like my natural hair is not for me. How? How is your hair that grows out of your head not going to be for you? And I feel like that's because she's grown accustomed to seeing herself in another image. She's grown accustomed to seeing herself with wigs and weaves and all this stuff. And that's okay to change it up. I'm not saying like, don't do it if you do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But don't let that affect who you really are like you should be doing it because you want to because you want to try something new but not because you literally feel like your hair isn't beautiful or your hair isn't manageable your hair isn't desirable don't feel that way and anyone who feels that way and thinks that way has serious self-esteem issues and anyone who makes you feel that way or think that way has inner problems with themselves because anyone who can accept themselves anyone who knows hey look People are different. This person may have straight hair. This person's hair may be super kinky. Like whatever the case may be, we're all who we're supposed to be. And there's nothing wrong with being you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. These strawberries are good. Okay, so the segue into that would be confidence. Confidence is gonna start and end with self-love. Have you noticed the people who are genuinely in love with themselves 
And if people who genuinely care about themselves are kind to other people, are nice to other people, they treat other people with love and respect because they have that for themselves. It's very, 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 very rare for you to meet somebody who has self-love, they take care of themselves, they feel good and confident about who they are, be mean to other people. They don't need to. They have, they have given so much love and so much understanding for themselves that where they see maybe flaw or lack in other people, they have an understanding of themselves. So it's not gonna make them treat anyone else unfair or differently because of where that person may be at. So take time to work on your confidence. It can be confidence in how you look. It can be confidence in you know how you perform. So like just whatever talent it is that you're putting forward or whatever you're giving energy to, having confidence in that, having confidence in understanding who you can be and how to get there and knowing that just because you're not there right now does not mean that you won't be there it does not mean that it's impossible for that to be who you are find things that are going to make you embrace who you are and i think the easiest thing to do is to use social media in a positive way instead of looking at it as oh, I need to get this plastic surgery so I can look like this person, or I need to do this to modify my body this way. Find other people who fit that aesthetic that you naturally have. For me personally, instead of, I mean, some of them you're gonna follow because you might like their personality. For example, like a Cardi B. You might like her personality. So you might follow her just because you like her personality. She's fun, she's cool. You know, not many people dislike her that I know of. But she's someone who's, who's cool, who's fun. But when I was on social media, more of the people that I wanted to follow and constantly see the image of would be people like Tracy Ellis Ross or Erica Badu, who did something weird lately. But anyways, <laughs> Erica Badu, um, Amanda Seals, Angela Rye, people like that. People who I felt aligned more so with who I am in the process of becoming and who share attributes that I have today. So when I see them, it feels more natural and I feel more included because that's who I am. So in all of that, you'll naturally begin to find your own style, your own aesthetic, who you are. Like you'll naturally begin to mold in it because you'll, you'll gravitate toward who you are naturally. Like, have you ever done something and you're like, I don't know why I've done this, but I just always like doing this. That's a part of your core. That's a part of who you are naturally. So who you are naturally is going to begin to come out. Like you can't suppress it. Like it's, it's gonna show itself. So embrace it. Embrace it when you are leaning toward getting locks. Embrace it when you are leaning toward, you know, cutting out social media so they're not so focused on image and material possessions. Like lean whatever way you lean naturally and understand why so taking that time through journaling taking that time through um, meditation just whatever it is so that you can connect with your inner self and that's how you'll you'll develop like your style or your your own aesthetic and within that you'll also be able to develop tribe because you'll attract like-minded people or people who may have that similarity like i'll never <laughs> The group that I had in college, I feel like we were so dope. Like the, the friends that I had, like we were so amazing because we had a deep, deep, deep similarity. And then in that similarity, we all branched out and had our own life experiences and had our own personalities to go with it. But at the core, we had a foundation that was extremely similar and that's what held us together. So that's how your form tribe and i'll explain like friendships and stuff in a little bit next i want to talk about dating so this is going to be an interesting part <laughs> dating date around but be careful be very careful because at this moment a lot of people and some people like 
I'm trying to be very careful with my words because I don't want to project anything that happened to me or my experiences onto other people. But I do want to be able to discuss trends that I see as a whole in our community when it comes to dating. Understand and know what you want and have deal breakers. And in that, know that your deal breakers should not be adjusted. You should not, you should not make adjustments for your deal breakers. But in that, I want to also say, remember you're human as well. So if you're gonna come with a list of demands down here, that's fine. But your list has to be something that of course aligns with you and your values, what you want. But make sure that other people can also say the same thing about you. Because a lot of people will hold others to a standard, but then they don't hold themselves to it. Don't be that person. What I'm trying to say is, be unwavering with your standards, but also realize people are human. I'm trying to be very careful with what I'm saying because I don't want to give off the wrong energy. Protect yourself, mind, body, and soul. That's the best thing I can do. Take care of your body. Um, be unwavering and kind to your body. And you can't expect people to, to protect your body and treat your body with the same loving care that you would there's a lot of people who do not take care of themselves and because they don't take care of themselves that can affect your body <laughs> okay i'm just gonna leave it at that that can affect you don't let someone else's health or a lack thereof affect you take care of yourself ladies or areas take care of yourself be smart be smart about who you who you choose to give relations to but then also know that uh later down the road and in, in your life in general even if you don't like it you're going to be able to look back at some point in time and be like okay this is why that happened okay this is why that happened there's a lot that's happened that i don't even discuss i don't talk about but as soon as it happens to one of my friends my maternal instinct just <laughs> just engulf them because I understand I feel like I've always been that friend and my fifth grade teacher even said it she said she has the maternal instinct like it's she's she's like the mother of the classroom I'll never forget that because I didn't see myself that way but when I look back I did see when people were upset they've come to me and this is the same thing that happened to me in high school. Like there would be girls that I was, you know, barely friends with or barely talked to. And they'd find themselves in different situations and like we'd be in class talking. And all of a sudden they're like <laughs> pouring their heart out to me. And it, it's a gift. It's a gift, definitely. But I think sometimes to have the, the true compassion and understanding that I want to have for people in situations, I had to go through some stuff so that I wasn't just giving um advice based off of oh what i think would happen if i were in this situation but i i've been there i understand how you feel don't give more to these especially because for me in college i've seen a lot of this with myself and other people that it seemed like i was on such a mission to find like the right guy or like on such a serious mission to like fall in love and be happy and take care of him <laughs> that led me to meeting a lot of people who honestly shouldn't even gotten a high five <laughs> and they got the best version of me like they got sweet kind funny awesome loving maternal all the stuff whatever the case may be they got all of that and they didn't treat it with love and respect as they should um they didn't treat it like that at all so in turn what it did for me is two things is one it caused me to be um, more defensive and less available for people who wanted to be in uh, healthy relationships or wanted to be in a situation to where you can you can work on a true solid companionship a true foundation 
So in that, what I'm saying is be careful who you give your love, your attention, your energy to, because once you share certain experiences and once certain things happen that hurt you and cause trauma, it's happened. And from there, it's up to you to heal. A lot of people have have pain, have hurt that they're holding on to that other people have done to them. And what we don't realize is it's like this. If you get in a car accident, right? God forbid. You are hoping that the person has insurance because it's going to make it so much easier. Exchange information and then go on from there. But at the end of the day, if they don't, right? It is your responsibility to fix your car. It is your responsibility to make sure that you can still get from point A to point B. The rest doesn't matter. Nobody else cares about the other details. So it's the same thing with relationships. You want to make sure that you're dating people who are insured. You want to make sure you're dating people who have done their self work, who have done their healing. And it is not your job to always be the one to fix them. It's not your job to always be the one to, oh, I'm going to figure this out for you. It's That's not your job especially if you're coming to them already having healed your traumas, already having had the discussions you needed to have, with the people you need to have them with, so that you can heal and you can be a better person. It, it just becomes too much. It becomes a, an overload for you. And while you're young and you're having fun and you're dating around, you shouldn't have that much burden and that much stress. But when you do, and if you do, Pick the right person. Pick the person who's going to do the same thing for you. Because you're going to have stages in your life. You're going to have a time where you may meet them and you may be perfectly fine. No traumas, nothing has happened to you. And then things start to happen or, you know, whatever the case may be in that relationship or outside that relationship. And you need help healing. It is up to you to heal. It's up to you to say it is time to heal. But pick someone who's going to go through that process with you if you're going to go through that process with someone else. Another good one that let's talk about. Friendships. Friendships, and, and, and I say this, we have seen multiple times recently in social media, friends harming, ending friends. So this is to say that good friends are not just walking around the, sh the like walking around good people are just walking around it's hard to find really good friends so when you do find good friends when you do find tribe know and understand the foundation is everything and know and understand the different boundaries that you have in your relationships but also don't discard or throw away friends because of a disagreement that can be discussed um, I feel too often, I've done it myself, and I have people do it to me, who I'm like, our friendship was deeper and better than how we, how we made it seem. Because there's a lot of people out here who are doing evil and just malicious things to people they call their friends, or to people they consider to be friends. And if you're with a group and none of that's happening, you guys just have like an unspoken thing that you need to handle or you just have a few disagreements hold on to good friends hold on to good people because i'm telling you good friends aren't just walking around like they're really good friends that i have we disagree we have our fights we have our differences but at the end of the day i know that nine times out of ten just finding someone else that's just like them finding someone else that's just like them mm -mm. No, they're too good of a person. They're too good of a friend. And you're not just going to find that walking down the street. Right now, it's bad. People are, <laughs> people, <laughs> woo, people are on some stuff. Like, I, the stories that I hear from people and just my experiences. But I just want to say that. For your friendships, ground yourself. Like I said earlier, you're going to find tribe as you begin to find and discover who you are. Because you're going to find and gravitate toward like-minded people. That will help you bring tribe. 
Once you find, try, keep trying. Keep the good friends, keep them close and hold on to them because like I said, good friends aren't just walking around. So if you know you're a good friend and someone wants to just <laughs> discard you like, huh, she's gonna find another Jordan. Good luck. <laughs> I, mean that in a, <laughs> I mean that in the most humble way. Good luck because mm -mm. no. And lastly, be you, be yourself. There are people in society who are up here. So we'll say like celebrities or influencers, whatever the case may be. And they set different trends and you to follow the trend uh, willingly, like, oh, I want to do that. Or you just kind of flow into it. Like, oh, I don't really care about it, but since everyone else is doing it, I guess I'll do it. And there'll be people who just are the, out, the outcast, the outsiders. Like they just don't do anything. <laughs> Whatever you choose to do, be yourself and be genuine and love yourself and love yourself genuinely and know that the self-love that you have is going to be greater than anything that you experience with other people. Um, so that's outside of higher power, God, Allah, universe, whatever it is that you believe in, that's outside of that. I'm talking about understanding of self tapping into who you are tapping into what you truly believe in and doing what feels right to you be true to yourself and there's so many different things especially now like i always say it about social media but there's so much things right now that can make you and tempt you to 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 follow so much other stuff that you're you 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 lose your genuine spirit love yourself and be you and like i said i wanted to come to you like a big loving sister just giving you a huge virtual hug and sharing my advice as someone who is i just turned 27 so i'm on the other side of the 20s i'm almost 30 ish <laughs> And also, a mama to be. So I, I see things right now just a little differently. And I feel like a lot of black girls, a lot of black women, we really need a hug right now. So this is my virtual hug. This is the way to give you a hug. And the relatability for me is most recently going to be for my early 20s because I would have to le sit and reflect and think back to when I was a teenager. I could give you advice and stuff like that if that's requested of me I have no problem doing that but I would have to really sit there and think because I mean at the core I'm the same person but there's a lot of the things that's happened in my 20s okay that uh that influenced that so I hope this helps you and the biggest thing is uh you need to find just an authentic space to be yourself and to feel loving energy and hopefully this is the place that allows you to do so so i have to lay down now guys because i'm getting winded <laughs> but um thank you for watching don't forget to take care of yourselves mind body and soul and if you're like me you got lost in this conversation and you didn't get to finish your vitality bowl go ahead and scrub that bowl down so that you can get all of the nutrients that you need or at least a good majority of it and i will see you guys in the next video bye